UFC 305 Duplessis versus Adesanya full card betting results. Now, we are on a three fight card winning streak, profiting streak in a row, but this is the least lucrative week that we've had in the three weeks we've been making money. This one, we did not profit a crazy amount, only $67, and it was like barely, by the skin of our teeth, did we make any money uh, on UFC 305. Uh, we had our underdog picks, Duplessis, I predicted him to win, obviously I'm going to bet him. Uh, we had Junior Taffa, uh, a little bit of a mess up there with the verbal tap. And then we have Casey O'Neill there as well, uh, that made him some good plus money um, bets. But the parlays did absolutely horrible with Jack Jank, or not Jack Jank, it's Steve Urseg failing the big $456 parlay. So if it weren't for Steve Urseg, like I always say, it's always one fight that would have completely changed the trajectory uh, of the profits of a, of, of a single card. But Steve Urseg got destroyed. He got knocked out pretty badly. And that was a big mess up on my part, predicting Steve Urseg to win and then feeling so good about Steve. Um, but made up for it with Drickus, made up for with Dan Hooker, made up for Ritz with Jarzinho Rosenstruck by a decision and made up for it with Casey O'Neill. So uh, we're going to talk about the entire card, all the bets that we made to, to really profit, not a crazy amount. Again, $67 profit, not a lot, nothing I should be bragging about, but that's three weeks in a row we have been profiting, so not too shabby. We're, I think we're four out of the last five we have profited, so doing pretty good recently, but again, this one is the least proud card that I've won money on because it was just by barely an inch that we were able to profit. We're going to start with the money lines, uh, two units on Duplessis. This was like a month ago. I think I look back. I think it was like the beginning of July when I bet on Drickus Duplessis. Um, I was like plus 140. This should be a pick 'em. What did we know? All the odds, all the money came running in on Drickus Duplessis. The win as the days and weeks and months went on. And then it was a pick 'em. And I was like, ah, I don't really want to be wagering $200. On Drickus Duplessis, seems like a little bit much on Duplessis. I'm not that confident. I don't feel that good on Duplessis. So I hedged out a little bit right here on the Drickus bet with 1.1 units on Adesanya, minus 1 at 110. Obviously, in hindsight, you can always say, oh, I wish I didn't do that, but I did it. Uh, I hedged out. I just didn't feel comfortable putting that much on Duplessis. I just thought there was a lot of value on plus 140, but I didn't want to bet that much. So uh, I hedged out a little bit there, made 280 with this one, um, and then lost 110. So an overall profit in that main event of what would be $170. So not too shabby at all. Uh, Dan Hooker plus 250. I've been saying it all week. If you go on to my... Uh, um, my YouTube channel, which we could go on to it while I'm talking about the fight. Dan Hooker went out there and, and just outstruck Gamera. The takedown defense looked really, really good. He was able to keep that one on the feet for pretty much the entire fight, except for a little bit of round one. And when he was getting taken down, he was getting right back up. He was using the guillotine to get right back up. I mean, it, it was a really, really impressive performance uh, by Dan Hooker. But as you see right here, my underdog of the week video, we had Casey O'Neill in it. We had Drickus Duplessis in it, and we had Dan Hooker. And Dan Hooker was my number one underdog of the card. Do I wish I put a full unit on him? Of course, hindsight is 2020, but we only had a half unit on Dan Hooker at plus 250 to make us an $125 profit. So not too shabby on Dan Hooker there, but that got immediately uh, erased with our early bet on Junior Taffa a few weeks ago when he was at plus money. Um, I bet him to win. I thought even if he got taken down, he'd be able to do enough damage on the feet to win the fight there uh, and win a decision. Obviously, the controversy uh, uh, with the verbal submission and things like that caused Junior to lose that fight, but I mean, it's his fault for screaming out in pain. Just Close your mouth, don't scream, and you'll you'll survive to round number two, round number three. But um, yeah, that's when we lost uh, in one of our underdog bets. But for the most part, I mean, Duplessis won, Dan Hooker won, and then we'll talk about a Casey O'Neill as well. Uh, but Junior Taffa, yeah, I mean, I'd still bet him again if they were to fight because I think round one he still would have won had it gone to round number two because of the damage he did early on. Um, and I think he'd just be better on later and later in the fight because he didn't look gassed out when the fight ended, uh, and it looked like if they get sweatier and sweatier and sweatier, the takedown defense would come a little 
easier, uh, especially with uh, Volter having bad gas tank. So I would bet that one again, but yeah, hindsight's 2020. Casey O'Neill plus 153. We got this one in really, really early before. Um, uh, it, it was right after Casey was the favorite for a second. Then all the money came in on Luana Santos, pushed her down to like plus 150, plus 160. We bet on her. Then a little bit of money started coming in back on Casey O'Neill, but Luana was still the favorite. I don't know why. Uh, Casey was my uh, one of my top three underdogs of the card. If you watch the underdog of the week video, we bet on her to win. I said bet on her money line or bet on her by decision both would have cashed uh we did the money line and profited a good 153 dollars now we'll talk about the props uh, we had Duplessis by decision. That was my prediction. So plus 400. Uh, I thought there was a lot of value on there. I mean, I, I thought there was, of course, a possibility he could go out there and, uh, and submit Israel Adesanya. That is actually uh, the most likely way he wins, surprisingly enough. Half of his wins are by submission, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, because that is just his second submission inside of the UFC. But, um, Curious to see what the submission odds were on uh, on Duplessis, but I didn't put a lot on that one, just 25 bucks on it to go all the way and Duplessis to get the win. This bet here, 320 bucks on Jerzinho Rosenstruck by a decision, and if there was a finish, no action at minus 160 on DraftKings. Only reason I did this one was kind of a hedge uh, to this parlay right here. Duplessis, Israel over a round and a half. Jarzinho versus Ty ends by knockout, which didn't happen. It went to a decision. That's why we had the hedge. Pratis Lee over a round and a half. That cashed. Uh, Casey O'Neill not to win by finish. That cashed. Jack Jenkins to win at plus 393. But it wouldn't have cashed anyway because we had, of course, Steve Urseg in it. So Steve messed up the parlays, which we'll talk about in a bit. But we really made this one a kind of hedge on this one. And I really did feel like, I mean, there's no way Ty to Ivasa is winning a decision. I mean, he's going to have to uh, keep coming forward and either knock him out or he's going to lose a decision or get knocked out himself. I thought there was no way Ty's winning a decision. So minus 160 felt like a lot of value, in my opinion, on Rosenstruik. Uh, we had a unit on Carlos Prates by decision. He was able to finish Li Jing Liang at the end of round two. I thought there was a good chance especially at plus 325, for him to go out there and win a decision, uh, win round one, win round two, maybe gas out a little bit, uh, and, and the leech to just survive. Leech has never been knocked out in his MMA or UFC career, so I felt like it was a good value bet. Of course, Carlos, I mean, dude is good. Dude, dude is so, so good. Was able to knock out the leech in round two, so didn't cash on that one, but I thought it was worth the bet, and uh, we had over uh, a round and a half. That barely, barely cashed for this parlay, but didn't even matter because we lost the parlay anyway. Um, 2.1 units on Jack Jenkins to win and over a round and a half. I was sweating. I was freaking sweating on this one right here. I mean, barely went over that a round and a half. Somehow got into round number three. And then Jack Jenkins was able to get the finish. But the rationale on this bet here is... Um, Herbert Burns always seems to lose in round number two towards the end of round number two because he's got a little bit of a win less left in him at the beginning of round, round number two. Then he starts to fade and they start to hit him with some big shots. Then he wilts right at the end and gets finished. I thought the prediction, in my opinion, was Jack Jenkins TKO four minutes into round number two. Somehow he survived to round three, but we still ended up cashing that one for a nice $200 profit. I was talking about this one like a week ago um, to the channel members, and uh, I ended up betting it. I was hoping for plus money, but uh, minus 105 was the best I could get. So I, I still thought it was a good one, and I ended up cashing. Of course, parlays recently have been doing amazing. The last like four or five cars, the parlays have been doing absolutely awesome. But this week, man, Steve Verse just... Uh, he disappointed. He disappointed. Um, did it. He just left the chin up a little bit. Uh, didn't back out of range fast enough. And of course, Kai has that kind of power to put you out. He's able to knock out Steven and, and ruin these two parlays. So if I were to uh, cash on this one, if Steve Ursig were to win, that would be an $856 um, flip. So I would have actually profited around 900 and I don't know, like what would it be, 910 $911 profit. But again, Steve uh, was one of, one of my more confident picks, and that, that one fell right on its face. So that's the, that's the up and downs of betting for you. Um, yeah, 
Only a $67 profit, mainly due to the parlays, just not doing that good at all. We went 2-2 two and two on props uh, for the Rosenstruck decision one, the Jack Jenkins to win and over 1.5, lost on these two. And then on the money line, we went 3-2. and two. So money lines and props did very, very well. The parlays did not. They, they disappointed for sure. But thank you guys for watching. Those are the betting results for UFC 305. Of course, if you do want to see all the bets we do make every single week, check the pinned comment down below. Check the description as well. Um, and yeah, like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.